Hello, this is the Silver Watchman, and welcome back to the Odd World series. Now, this should be episode number 27. Now, in the typical beginning of the episode fashion, at least for the past couple of episodes, uh, we're going to kick this off with a bit of prayer. If you don't want to, skip ahead, and I will go quiet for a little bit while we watch the last of the lore catching up sections of the game I really don't know what else to call them other than exactly what I just called them so without further ado uh, in the previous episode we went through Jeremiah's chapter 5 and 4 we're gonna go through chapter 6 and 7 in this episode maybe 8 if we have the time but these chapters have proven to be extremely long without further ado uh, let's get this started with some prayer Dear Lord, may you speak through me, that you will be heard on earth as it is in heaven. Hold my tongue that I may not speak foolishness, but instead words of wisdom, honor, and glory for you and your kingdom. May you save the souls of those who want to be saved today. May you reach out, touch the heart of those, and grant people the understanding necessary that they may be able to understand what's being presented to them today. And may give them a new outlook on your word as we go through it today. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So, like I said, I'm going to go quiet for a little bit, and I'm going to come back right after the... Um, the cutscenes that break down the, to just, to, to just bring us up to speed in Munch's Odyssey. Just in time. And I got the usual reception. The Dodgers were slowly coming together. And they were using their skills to build something new. Taking things one step at a time. Can I get no? no. Just shut up. All was going well. But we knew there had to be more of us out there. 
And I'm back. So, we're going to be kicking off with Jeremiah chapter 6, King James Version of the Bible. Without further ado, let's begin. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem, and blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and set up a side of fire at Beth. Besh Thakarim, for evil appeared out of the north and great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comedy and a and delicate to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flock shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed every one in his place. Prepare ye war against her. Arise, let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. For thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew ye, da Hew ye down trees, and cast a mount against Jerusalem. This is a city to be visited. She is holy oppression in the midst of her. As a fountain casteth out, casteth out her waters, so she cast casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Before me continually is grief and wounds. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I may thee desolate, and a land not inhabited. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine, and turn back thine hand as a gape gatherer, grape gatherer, into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ears uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord, and I, I am weary with honing in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad, and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others, and their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to coveted, covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. 
Were they ashamed when they had committed a, abomination? Nay, they were not all ashamed. Not at, at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cut down, cast down, save the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear ye nations. And know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, and behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me? Incense from Sheba, and a sweet cane from a far country. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifice is sweet unto me. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them, the neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a per people cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on a bow, on bow and spear. They are cruel, and have no mercy. Their voices their voice roareth like the sea. They ride upon horses. Set an array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. Anguish hath taken hold of us, and pain as of a woman in travail. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy, and fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth, and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning, as for an only son, most bitter lamentation. For the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people that thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed of the fire. The founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. Reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. Jeremiah chapter 7 The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord, of the Lord's house, and proclaim there in this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter the, in the in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways to your and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers for ever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit, will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and, fall, and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not. And come and stand 
before me in this house, who just called by my name and say, we are delivered to do all these abom abominations. Is this the house who just called by my name? Become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I said my name at, at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto his house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust unto the place which I give unto you and your fathers, as I have done in Shiloh, and will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured upon this place, upon man and upon beast, upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground shall it burn, and shall not be quenched, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices, and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing I have commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward, and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have seen unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up, early in sending them, yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken, on, hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places, for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generations of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. They have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnon, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came, came it unto my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, 
that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Topheth, there, till there be no place. And the carcass of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the, of the heaven, for the beasts of the earth. And none shall fray them away. Then our cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem. The voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of, of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. All right, so there's a lot going on here. But without further ado, I will be back in a little bit, and when I return, I will be breaking down these two chapters. Uh, like I said, these chapters in Jeremiah are really long. Typically, uh, Bible chapters are between one and around 15 verses. Jeremiah is averaging out pretty much every chapter so far, having at least around 25, 28 verses. Which is kind of a lot to read. Especially when you are mildly sleep deprived. But nevertheless, so I shall return and we will start breaking it down as soon as I get back and refill my cup of water. All right, and I'm back. So. Let's take a closer look at chapter 6, which is a whopping 30 verses long, but not nearly as bad as chapter 7, which is a whopping 34 verses long. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but... It kind of is. But we're not going into, you know, oh my gosh, this is a long, I'm, I apologize for the noise. I am just moving uh, some paperwork to the side that I realize is not uh, the proper notes to have. It's okay. I have digital notes. So let's take a look at three different verses from chapter six. The first one we want to take a look at is And verse 15. So let's look at verse 2. I have likened them, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Now, we understand that the daughter of Zion. Actually, there isn't much context here. So let's go, let's take a look with our handy dandy PDA to see. One, what is the daughter of Zion? Two, what is comely? And three, well, I mean, we all know what delicate is. It's something that is fragile, for lack of a better word. Now, what is the daughter of Of Zion. Now, now, 
Now, Zion is a, another word for Jerusalem, meaning the daughter of Jerusalem. Or, in other words, Judah. Because Jerusalem was there first, but out of Jerusalem, if I remember correctly, came Judah. Because Judah wasn't there initially. It came after it came after some events, I believe um, the invasion of the Babylonians. If my memory of history is correct, it may not be. But so I basically what he's saying I have likened Judah to a comely and delicate woman, but what is the definition of comely? And I'm really hoping this does not pull up something else. Now, what is comely? Comely. If only so pleasurable, pleasurably comforting to notions of good appearance, suitably, 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 su oh my gosh. Basically, good enoughness, because I can't pronounce, pronounce suitable. Su oh my gosh. Suitability. Or proportion going in with him. They that observe. Oh, that it's neat. Having a pleasing appearance. Not a homely or plain, a comely young woman. So basically, I've likened the daughter of Zion, the daughter of Jerusalem, to a beautiful and delicate woman. Which really does say another thing as well. It's also saying how much favor God does have for Jerusalem. That even the something that came from Jerusalem in God's eyes is beautiful. Despite, now we go on to a later verse. Which is verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. They cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Now, now when it comes to um, comes to Jewish culture, circumcision is a very big thing because to be circumcised is in a way a physical seal or a physical modification on the body to represent the fact that you are in fact a Jew because it was one of the main ways that differentiated a Gentile from a Jew which is, you know, circumcision but what is circumcision circumcision is the it is when the foreskin of the penis is removed via a blade or Basically with something sharp. And it is typically done within the first... 
on the seventh day of the male child being born. But if you are, if you come into it, into Judaism later on in your life, it is a sign of coming to serve God because it is harder to do as an adult than it would be as a kid. Simply because after getting circumcised as an adult or even as a teenager, you can uh, be susceptible to infection and a fever, which I am uncertain as to how long it lasts. And we can actually look it up right now. Is circumcision... Really? That's in the top... That's in the top ten. Is circumcision in the Bible. We are literally reading this in the... Sorry, I'm just... I'm actually a little taken aback by this. That it needs to be looked up. Is circumcision... Actually, that's a pretty... Is it painful for babies? It can be done at any age. Traditionally, the most common time to do it is soon after your baby is born, within the first month of life, because the process is painful. So... Oh, there's a lot of articles on that. That is actually kind of impressive. So, basically saying that, uh, put it simply, you haven't, you haven't set yourself to actually listen. So, because you haven't set yourself aside to listen, you won't because they haven't set their, themselves to listen haven't set themselves aside because the act of getting a circumcision is setting that person aside to do the work of god but the fact that they have not circumcised their ears meaning that they have not opened their ears to hear the word of god they cannot hearken unto him or they cannot hear him they cannot understand what he's saying because they haven't mentally prepared for it. And behold, the word of the Lord unto them is a reproach. They have no delight in it. And the reason for that is they have no stake in it. They have no reason to... enjoy the word of the Lord. They have no reason to make the effort to understand it. To them, it's just a collection of words that tell them that they're doing something wrong. Now let's go to verse 15, because that's about the amount that I can break down uh, that verse. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Now, this is a rather interesting thing that's, that's there. Because this is asking a question. But in asking this question and answering it, God is saying a lot more than did you guys do something that was abhorrent. He's saying, in essence of this, I understand where you're coming from. I understand what's in your heart when you did it. 
and it's not the fact that you chose not to be. Because there's a difference between would and could. And the fact that they that it's said here, neither could they blush. Meaning that at that point in time, because of the fact that they weren't ashamed of what they have done, of the abominations that they have, which is, you know, in the previous examples laid out here, Uh, they're given a covetousness or envy. Uh, let's see. The priest and the prophet. And prophets are the, you know, the people that are supposed to have a at the least at the time, have a direct connection to God and be able to speak to God directly. And they deal falsely or they lie. They've also... They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace meaning that they are lying about the situation so that way people don't panic and in god's eyes a lying mouth or, or at least a lying tongue it is considered an abomination so Because of the fact that they're so dedicated to deceiving, to lying, and keeping up their status. They are unable to feel guilty about what they've done, which is deceiving. the people of God or the daughter of my people so now now that we've gone through that chapter about as much as I can for the time that I have I have run out of time and I spent it all on chapter 6 okay let's go into chapter 7 real quick and let's just find about one or two verses that I can go through for now Which is Jeremiah 7, chapter, verse 23. But this thing I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Meaning, God just had one real commandment for them. Hear me and listen, and you will be of me, and I will be for you. And then it goes on to how, because of the fact that they didn't listen, they'll have to face punishment for their actions. And that is all the time I have for breaking down the word in this, uh, in this session. In the next video, I will be going through chapters 8 and 9, and I apologize for getting stuck up on chapter 6, but there was a lot to break down, and I had a hard time deciding what to and to not break down. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will, he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. That is in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, King James Version of the Bible. And that's also a good place to leave it, at least verse-wise. When he saves you, that is a cause for celebration, because you've come from death over to life. Now, if you want to be able to properly understand this word, you could do it the hard way, which is just, you know, studying it for years at a time and having no real connection to God, which is kind of like uh, reading, uh, reading stuff from, let's say, a, a famous author, for example, Edgar Allan Poe, and not knowing who he is at all. You wouldn't really understand the context of it because you wouldn't really understand his personality. 
the personality of the person that wrote it. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, King James Version of the Bible. And in that, if you want to be able to better understand this, or at the very least, if you want to stand for something bigger than yourself, then join me in prayer. And if not, skip ahead a, about a minute or so again, and uh, we should be done. Dear Lord, and uh, repeat after me. Dear Lord, I believe that you, Jesus, are the Christ and that you are the Son of the living God, but more than that, that you are my Savior, that you have the power to change the course of my very life. So I ask for you to change that course and to push me in the direction where I need to go. I give my life unto you. But I ask that you shall save my soul. That you wash away my sins with your heavenly blood. May you breathe into me new life and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to walk in the light and bring light wherever I go. I know only you can do this. And I thank you for doing so. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you made that prayer in faith, welcome to the family. You are technically a Christian now. Uh, your next step is to go and find somebody who's anointed to baptize you in water that you may announce before man, God, demon, and angel that the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I'm going to grab a drink of water because honestly my throat is parched. <clears throat> And I do apologize for lacking focus on this and getting stuck up on one chapter for pretty much the entire episode. Uh, I had accidentally grabbed the wrong notes, so I had to go with uh, the highlighted points that I did have. So, that is on me, and I will make up for that in the next episode. But, here's the thing. If you like this or if you have your own understanding on how to break down these chapters, then leave it in the comments. Uh, for those of you that pro produce like the best breakdown of the chapter themselves to you, to what you understand, I will uh, pin it if I get to it. If not, then you know if enough people like it, I'll, I will most likely be able to get to see it. Um, another thing you guys could do to help out the channel, uh, you know, just like the video, share it, because, you know, that helps out with the, uh, analytics. Uh, I'm pretty sure this, this episode is not getting monetized, just because I said the word, um, just because I said the word penis in the explanation of what is a circumcision. And earlier in my YouTube career, I tried to uh, s step around it. But honestly, I'm at a point now where I'm just like, I'm your teacher and I kind of have to be mature about these things. Uh, I would do my best. I do not curse. But at the same time, I know I, I won't shy away from explaining it as best as I possibly can. And hey, if you don't want to do any of that, if you don't want to subscribe, like, share, can you do this? Can you help out the least of your societies? By doing so, you'll help out me and represent me and represent God. Either way, though, like I said, I have run out of time in this episode. So I will see you guys in the next episode. And I will be back next week to bring you a brand new lesson. Thank you all for watching. Glory be to God. And this is the Silver Watchman. 
signing out. Blessings be to you all, and have a nice day. Or week. <laughs>